Hello, everyone. <sighs> Sarah here with Seriously Successful Podcasters. And I'm starting this video over because our internet died, and I'm so sorry about that. So hopefully uh, you will see this new video and jump on over and join us over here. Tonight, we are talking about your podcasting business plan. Hello, Garrett's. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone coming back over. Uh, I missed you, and I'm glad to be with you again. I reset my router, so hopefully the internet will behave for a while for the duration of this live stream. Mm, wish me luck. Wish me luck. So uh, I'll do a quick recap of what I covered in the other video so that these uh, so that people can kind of just watch this one and not need to watch the other one. Um, basically, uh, I think a lot of creators are uh, intimidated by or afraid of or nervous about the business side of podcasting. And this is because maybe we've been told that uh, the creative side and the business side of things can't mix or because we've been told that, hi Tamara, hi Jimmy, hi Garrett, uh, we, we've been told that uh, we'll be sellouts if we pursue the business side of creativity. Um, my own mind has been changed a lot on this. So I mentioned in the other uh, version of this chat that I was a poetry and English major in college and always said that, oh, I'll never sell out, I'll never whatever, I'll keep my art pure. I mean, and, and I don't wanna like dismiss that, but um, my mindset has changed a lot since then because I want to make money from my podcast. I wanna make money from my creative endeavors. And so that's what I'm endeavoring to do. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and talk a little bit about this business plan. Um, I began following uh, Mariah Kaz in late 20, it must've been 2016. I still, I still can't get my dates right. I think it was 2016 when I was thinking about leaving my day job and starting to freelance and create and do things for myself. I just realized the working world was not a place where uh, I belonged or wanted to be, um, and I wanted to, to try things on my own. <laughs> Jimmy says, at the mere mention of PNL reports, the internet fell asleep. Ah, yep, yep. Uh, we're, we're not going to talk about PNL statements tonight, uh, but we are going to talk about your business plan for your podcast. So, uh, what I have here, I brought up Mariah Cause earlier because I originally learned this system from her. Um, I started with zero business knowledge or experience. I've never taken a, an accounting class. I've never taken a business class. Um, I've learned everything I know about business from the internet. So uh, I'd love to share that with you today. And hopefully uh, you'll, you'll take away, um, if not a, a certain bit of business savvy, then at least um, a little bit more of a can-do attitude toward this. So, so what I did was I went back in time, aka my old notebooks, and I dug out um, my original business plans for my podcasts that I created um, under Mariah Kaz's tutelage. And so I want to share those with you. Um, I'm comfortable being completely transparent uh, with my numbers and hopes and dreams. Uh, so uh, if you're game to take a look at this, I'm game to share it. So you can see right off the bat, this probably does not look like any business plan that you have ever seen in your entire life. Uh, it is full of bubbles and circles, and you can see there's a top half and a bottom half, and we'll cover what each of these means. But I, I really like this method, um, and this one is from uh, 2017. I really like this method because for me, as a creative person, um, it's easy to fill out. It's easy to see how uh, things in certain bubbles and circles uh, affect other things and other bubbles and circles. Um, so I just thought I would share this with you. You don't have to copy it verbatim, um, but this just has a few of the things that are important to keep track of as a creator. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of show you this one. And then I have mine from 2018 as well. 
Um, so you can see I'm still using that bubble structure, which I have here to share with you in a second if you're interested in creating something like this. Um, I, I create these myself, um, tracing quarters. Um, so you can see here, I have one for 2020. It's very, uh, very homemade. As you can see, there is a reason that I do audio and not visual creative stuff. Um, but basically what we're going to do is talk about um, all of the money that goes into our work and then the audience and where our audience comes from and how these two things meet to create what we need for our podcasting business. So I've heard a lot of podcast creators talk about how they don't want to think about their podcast as a business, that it's just a hobby. But then a lot of these same podcasters who say that also are upset and complain that they're not making more money with their podcast. And so, um, I don't know, I would encourage you to change your mindset a little bit and maybe just embrace the beginning steps for this. Again, uh, these business plans are very simple and they're very, um, they're very visual. So they're not um, anything that your accountant will look at and be impressed by. And if there are any accountants, if there's any business majors here watching this video, prepare to be horrified, okay? I'm just gonna say that. You're not gonna like what you see, but for people like me who, uh, are maybe a little uncomfortable with profit and loss statements and spreadsheets and stuff. Like this was a good uh, intro and a good workaround for me. Oh, hi Damien, thank you, good. I hope I hope this is helpful. I hope this is helpful for everyone who is watching. So um, I gave you some brief glimpses of my 2017 and 2018 podcasting business plans. I couldn't find my 2019 one, which I think says a lot about how 2019 has been going for me. Uh, it's kind of par for the course. Um, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, what our 2020 business plan is going to look like. So again, as you can see, a bunch of circles, one rectangle in the middle, some arrows. Um, I can take a photo of this and post it to the chat of this if you want to create your own. You may hate this format, um, but that's okay. You don't have to use it. You don't have to use it verbatim. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put money on top and audience on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do this along with you actually. So we're, we're going to, this is going to be like a little work along activity. Um, so money goes on the top, so I'm going to draw a little dollar sign. And audience goes on the bottom, so I'm going to draw a little stick figure. Um, so when we're talking about our money, so here's a little dollar sign that I drew, and there's like the little audience person. Um, I have seven small circles here around the outside. So this is where I'm going to put for, uh, for 2020 what I expect to make from each of my different income streams. So I, I usually recommend that a podcast has at least one income stream. Uh, the more the better, because if you put all of your eggs into one metaphorical financial basket, if you lose that basket or if all the eggs explode or something, uh, you know, then you're kind of out of eggs where eggs equals money in this equation. So uh, I don't want that to happen to you. Um, just in case uh, Patreon decides to stop working, just in case Kofi or Kofi, Kofi, whatever it is, how to, how to pronounce that, in case that goes down, um, in case your live show bombs, whatever that might be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start labeling these circles here with different ways that my podcast can make money in 2020. Okay, so... I'll just kind of narrate what I'm doing as I do it. Um, oh, Jimmy says, I think they call their podcast a hobby. Oh, because if it doesn't make money, you can distance yourself from the failure. Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that's heavy. That's, yeah. Nobody wants to say they have a failed business, but if you say that podcasting is just a hobby and you don't make money doing it, it kind of lets you off the hook. Woo. 
Oh man, wow. That resonates with me. Okay, so for my first income stream here, um, I'm gonna just start filling in. So I have seven income streams, which is why I have seven little bubbles. Uh, so the first one is going to be my right now Patreon. Then I've got my Girl in Space Patreon. And then I've got, um, so I'm glancing over here at my 2018 uh, business plan for reference. And I have things on here like ghostwriting, which is something that I did before and is something that I'm looking to no longer do. And so I'm not going to put that down in a bubble because I don't want to make more from it. Um, I will put down merch. I'll put down speaking because I do some speaking gigs related to podcasting. Um, I have uh, my course. I have my Kofi. What do you think number seven? Number seven used to be my, my ghostwriting, which is how I would keep myself financially afloat um, if I had some things that my Patreon or my podcasting wouldn't cover. Um, oh, Jimmy says, if I make a plan, the universe sees it and it's real. Exactly, exactly. So uh, you can either do this by year or by month. Um, I usually like to break this down by month. So I have six of my little bubbles filled out. I'll share that with you. So I've got right now Patreon, uh, Girl in Space Patreon. I've got merch, speaking gigs my course. Oh, I didn't put live shows on here, did I? Ah, that'll be my seventh bubble. Live shows. So again, you can choose either year or month. For me, um, some of these will be uh, easier. Some of these will be harder. I'm going to do per month. Um, and what you're going to do is you can project what you think you'll make per month or what your target will be per month for each of these different platforms. So um, right now, Patreon, uh, I haven't done a right now episode in a very long time. So right now I'm making zero a month uh, from my right now podcast, Patreon, which, you know, I'm I'm okay with it's my it's my fault that I'm not making money on that right now. Um, if any of you attended John Grill's uh, live stream earlier this week on Patreon, uh, he talks about you can do per month or per episode. So the right now podcast I have per episode. So right now, since I'm not making any episodes, uh, I'm not making any money. So right now that's zero. Um, if I get back into making those. Um, I used to do them once a week. Um, I have, I make about $90 per episode on that. And so if I go back to doing weekly episodes of the Right Now podcast, that will put me at um, about $400 a month. I should really go back to doing those. Holy cow. Uh, girl, in, and I'm going to be honest with my numbers here. Um, if that bothers you, if that, um, uh, upsets you or if you don't like talking about money, um, you can go ahead and, and kind of shut out this live stream because I'm going to be very honest about uh, my numbers and the money that I make through different um, through different avenues of, of podcasting here. Um, some of you probably make a lot more than I do and some of you may make a lot less than I do from podcasting and that's okay because we're going to work through this together and we're all going to be millionaires from podcasting one day. It's going to be great. All right. So Girl in Space Patreon, I make about $1,300 a month. Uh, merch, I usually make about $75 a month. Speaking gigs, I do... Um, probably about six speaking gigs every year and they pay various things. Um, <laughs> Damien says, don't make me call in the burnout police. <laughs> yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Nope. Uh, don't burn yourselves out doing this. It's, it's not worth it. Um, so speaking gigs, Oh, um, I either, 
I either get paid uh, nicely for doing a speaking gig or I make nothing. Uh, a lot of the podcasting gigs I do um, historically have not paid anything. Um, sometimes I can get my flight covered. Um, but we'll say I'll make an average of $200 from a speaking engagement. And so if I do six of those a year, half of that, since I'm doing per month, is $100. So I'll say $100 a month-ish speaking. Um, I teach my podcasting course, um, which I just launched. Uh, sorry, this is not an advertisement for that. Um, but I did just launch my Podcast Now Masterclass uh, three days ago. I launched it on Monday, and so some of you have watched a webinar about that. Uh, yeah, I'm looking to uh, make one or two course sales uh, a month from that. And so I'll say I'm making $3,000 a month from course sales. Uh, my next thing on here is, I don't know how to pronounce it, Kofi, Kofi, whatever it is. Um, I make about $10 a month from that for my podcasts. And then the big wild card on here is live shows because I don't do live shows yet. I am going to be part of Wi-Fi Sci-Fi Live coming up in April 2020. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to make any money. So um, we'll just say zero right now. So we'll call live shows a wash just for now. So the next step, I'm going to show you what I have here. So I filled in... Uh, my different numbers here. You can see they're all monthly. So I have $400 a month if I go back to doing right now episodes, which are true. Um, Damien, don't call the burnout police, please. Uh, I have my Patreon for Girl in Space. I have the money that I make from merchandise, and I do my merchandise through Tee Public, um, which has been which has been a good partner so far. They do drop shipping, so I don't have to keep. Uh, any inventory in my cat hair infested house. Um, I have $100 a month for speaking engagements. Again, I said I do about six of those a year. And if each of them pays me an average of $200, then that's about $100 a month average for speaking. Because um, again, you're going to spread everything out. Um, I would like to make uh, $3,000 a month in course sales. Uh, I make about $10 a month from Kofi or Kofi or whatever. And then uh, I put zero for the live show because I can't count on that right now. So all of these we're going to add up to per month in the big circle in the middle. So this is going to be our revenue. This is going to be our profits. This is going to be our like the, the money that we make from podcasting. So I'm going to get a calculator because I can do very simple math in my head, uh, but not the, not, not adding big numbers. So let's, let's go ahead and, okay, so I'm going to add up, so I'm going to, uh -huh, plus, uh -huh, plus, uh -huh, month, plus 100, plus, uh -huh, plus 10, plus zero. I guess I didn't need to do the plus zero there. So um, per month, that's going to be $48.85 per month. And then we'll multiply that by 12 to get our projected revenue for the year. And so that is $58,620 for the year. So I'll share this with you here. So you can see your numbers might be way bigger than mine. Your numbers might be smaller than mine. Um, whether your numbers are bigger or smaller than mine, it doesn't matter. Again, I'm not doing this to invite comparison or anger or guilt or, <laughs> you know, any of those those gross feelings. Um, the, the attitude that I come toward this with is I can do this and you can do this. We can do this. You can make, so I'm making 58 K a year, um, projected for 2020 from podcasting. Um, you can make money too. So, um, in the middle here in this rectangle, we're going to put our earnings here. So 58, 
620. Again, this is projected. So you can see there in the middle. Now what we're going to do is figure out the rest of the money stuff because, um, oh, and if you are currently employed full time and you want to make that one of your circles. So if you want to put like um, whatever your salary, your take home pay is there too, to make this just a full comprehensive picture of your earnings from your full time job and from podcasting. This is everything that I live on right now. And so this is a full picture for me. So you might want to make one of your bubbles, um, your, your, uh, your pay from your full time job. Uh, if that's something that you have to add in there. Or if you have other income streams, um, if you uh, do nannying, if you sell things on Etsy, any of that stuff, like you are not limited to the things that I've put here, okay? I wanna be very, 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 very clear about that. Okay. So now um, I have four things that I'm gonna put here on the side and I'm gonna erase my little, my little audience man, my stick figure because he's getting in the way. And we've got, this is where some of the money is going. All right. Personal salary. And, okay. So I made a little bracket here off to the side. So, whoops. I get so messed up by like not things not being reciprocally flipped. So over here, uh, some of this money is going to go to taxes, uh, my savings, my personal salary, and charity. These are things that are important. Yours might look the same. They might look a little bit different. Um, oh, good. Megan says this is super helpful. Good, good, good. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> Talking about money is so weird because. Um, there's just a lot of emotions behind it. Um, and those emotions come out sometimes in weird and ugly ways. And so, um, but again, I want to be honest. And so if, if that generates some gross feelings, I'm sorry. But I want to be honest because that is important because I want you to know what's realistic. Okay, so for taxes, um, since I'm self-employed, I usually allocate about 33% of what I make to taxes. Ugh, I know, I know. And, and it doesn't end up being that much usually. Um, that's just what I like to set aside so that I am safe. At the end of the year, or I guess, you know, in April, when taxes come due, and as a self-employed person, when I pay quarterly taxes and state taxes, just so I have enough money, um, I have a separate bank account that's just for my taxes. Um, so like every time I get a chunk of money that comes in, I take out 33% of that chunk and it hurts so bad, but I take out a third of that money and I put it in my tax account. And then at the end of the year, um, that's the account that, or, you know, quarterly, that's the account that I pay my taxes from my state taxes, my federal taxes. Um, and then if I end up owing less than what I have in the account, then I, that's my own bonus. Like that's my tax refund, but I just give it to myself. And it's kind of nice because I've been holding on to it and the government has not been holding on to it. And so I get the interest from it because you know, interest rates are amazing right now. I say this having worked at a bank for five and a half years. Um, yeah, interest rates are terrible. Um, Oh, Pete says, my signal's a little broken, so if you've already answered this, ignore it. If you have a sporadic income in one of those circles, do you average? Yes. So, um, like I said, for my speaking gigs, I do about six of those a year. And, like, this year, uh, 2019, I did five of those speaking gigs in October. So I had a crazy October. But what I did with my plan is I averaged it out. Like, I added up what I made, and then I split it out over... Uh, divided it by 12 so that I would have an idea of like monthly ish what that would look like. So um, each of those gigs, you know, and some of them pay and some of them don't, some of them pay more, some of them pay less. Um, I averaged it out and just kind of did the best I could. Um, so if you have a podcast that comes out in seasons and you're charging 
per episode in your Patreon. Um, if you have an idea of what you're going to be releasing throughout the year, that's fantastic. And you can use that um, as your rubric for figuring out and writing out 12, uh, what each month will look like. Or if you prefer, you can just do this whole thing as a year. Um, I like to divide it out by months because that's just how I pay bills. Like, I, I basically I'm doing this to know, will I be able to pay my bills? Which is important. Um, oh, so yeah, so that was a, that was a fantastic, Pete, that was a fantastic question. Um, so yeah, so going back to this, uh, so 33% of what I make goes into my tax account. Um, my savings, um, the past few years, I have not been putting money into savings. I hope my parents aren't watching this. Um, but yeah, what, I, what I've done instead is reinvested it in my business, which is what this little arrow is over here. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so if you want to allocate money into your savings, if you are able to do that, that's awesome. You should do that. So this is about 33%. If I was putting money in my savings, I would say probably between 5 and 7% should go into my savings, if not more, um, if I'm being fiscally responsible. Uh, personal salary is the next thing on here. I don't know if you can see this. I hope my handwriting is legible for you. Um, personal salary uh, is how much money you actually get to use out of the money that you make. And so this can be a percentage or this can be um, like a set amount, like per month. You can say like, oh, I'm going to pay myself $1,500 a month so that I can pay all of my bills. Um, you can see here in my past, uh, in my past business plans, that um, personal number has been zero. Um, that's sort of like, uh, you know, when Mark Zuckerberg pays himself like a dollar a year because he doesn't need the money, which must be nice. Um, <laughs> that's sort of what he's doing there. So like he's making a lot of money for his business, but he's not taking any of it out like to pay his bills or like to buy a yacht or whatever you do when you're making millions of dollars. So, okay. I hope that makes sense. And then charity is on here. Charity is important. I believe that putting goodness out into the world through money as a tool is just a good thing to do. Um, and I usually try to make that about 10% just because I grew up in the church and we always tithe 10%. And so I've got 33% going to taxes, 10% going to charity. Uh, I'm going to keep my business savings just at zero for now, so don't judge me. So then that leaves me 57% uh, left. I just did that math in my head. Aren't you impressed? Um, that leaves me 57% left for either personal salary or uh, reinvesting back into my business. So when I talk about reinvesting back into my business. And again, I'll show you my diagram here. So I'm talking about this. So it goes back into the business. And um, that can be what you're spending money on for your podcast. And so that would be like, um, so I pay Libsyn for both of my shows for hosting, even though I haven't been updating right now, I'm still paying for hosting you know, because it's a thing we do. Uh, I have a $15 a month account and a $5 a month account um, for each of my two shows. And so that's $20 a month for hosting. So that I count as being reinvested back into my business as a business expense. Um, Again, those of you who are actual accountants and business people, you're going to be really mad because expenses are not the same thing as reinvesting in your business. Um, but for these very simple purposes, um, that's just how I talk about that stuff. Um, let's see. I also have, here's some things that I've done in the past. Um, software. So if I wanted to upgrade from Audacity to something else, um, I could allocate a percentage of money or an amount of money toward that. Um, 
education, conferences, if you plan on attending podcast movements, setting aside, I'm not sure right now how much it is, but it's kind of a big chunk of money, setting aside that money to attend podcast movement or PodFest or whatever it is you'd like to attend, plus airfare, plus hotel, don't forget that. Um, if you plan on doing, um, if you plan on buying your own merch, so I purchase a lot of my own merchandise to, um, <laughs> to give away at conventions. So I was at, um, where was I? Did we have PodCon, was PodCon this year? Was the last PodCon this year? I don't remember. Um, but I bought a, a large chunk of my own merchandise, um, Gosh, it must have been this year. I think I spent seven or eight hundred dollars on T-shirts and stickers and some mugs and tumblers and stuff uh, to bring to PodCon where I had a booth. And then the booth was also an expense. So anyway, it's it's it get, it gets to be it gets to be a lot sometimes. And again, yours might be more complicated than this, or it might be simpler than this. Um, this is also where you're going to put um, people costs. So um, if you have, if you pay someone to do your sound design, if you pay someone to do uh, editing, sorry, the word was coming to me. Um, if you pay someone to do those kind of things, if you have a virtual assistant or a real life assistant, um, any of that stuff related to your podcast, those are going to be uh, listed out there. So you can see here, Pretend that I have a bigger list over here other than just hosting because I, I pay to attend conferences and stuff like that with the money I make. Okay. Whew. Is everybody doing okay? We're doing okay? Oh, we're doing okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Casey says, promoting costs money. It's sad, but it's true. It does. But it's one of those things where um, when you take money – um, out of what you've made and you reinvest it in your podcast, hopefully the hope is, and if you're, if you're doing it right, and if you're doing it strategically, and if you're doing it smartly, smartly, intelligently, whatever the word is, um, you will see a return on that investment. That's the hope. So when you spend money, you never just, people say you have to spend money to make money, which in a way is true because that's how you grow and build your podcast as a business. But what you don't want to do is just spend money wildly and not strategically. What you, what you need to do is measure what's called the return on your investment, the ROI. So uh, if I spend $700 on shirts, what is my return from that investment going to be? Am I giving away the shirts or am I selling them? Or am I raffling off one and selling the rest? Um, and then how much am I selling them for? Um, if I pay $20 for a shirt and I'm selling it for 19, uh, I'm gonna lose money and that's a bad investment for my business. Unless the return on that investment comes in goodwill from people to whom you are giving away or selling these shirts at an extremely reduced rate. So please do keep all of that in mind. You know, it's really funny. Um, I was like, oh, I'm going to talk about podcasting business plans and I'm going to show everybody my really cute little podcast business plan. And this, this live stream is going to take like 10 minutes. <laughs> ah, I hope you're following along. And this bottom section, which we're about to fill out, is going to go fairly quickly. Okay, I promise. All right, but everybody's still with me? Good, good, doing good. Okay, good. I love to hear that. Fantastic. So we talked about money being the top of the business plan, and that's part of it. The bottom part of the business plan is people. It's our clients. It's our audience. It's the people who are going to give us money, give us attention, spread the word, somehow elevate our business. And these assets. Ooh, can I call people assets? Ooh, ooh, that, that feels a little, that feels a little yucky. That feels a little soul sucking and corporate. Um, and yes, Jimmy, this is coffee. I am drinking coffee. It is 8 PM. I took like three day quill before starting this, uh, live stream. My brain is in a very strange place right now. So I'm really glad you're here to witness whatever this is right now. I really also like that um, I'm probably coming down with the flu or something and I'm sitting here like talking about your business plan. So I hope you're enjoying this. 
<laughs> I may rewatch this live stream tomorrow and be like, <laughs> what was I thinking? Okay, so let's talk about your audience. Okay, so just like we had multiple income streams, ideally, uh, up at the top when we're talking about money, we also want to have multiple sources for where our listeners and our audience come from. So uh, you may, I have, again, I have seven circles and I literally just traced a quarter um, for each of these, it, you know, because that's how we do. And I used a Sharpie. So it's like, you know, it doesn't take a lot of money to make one of these. Um, so each of these will be uh, where different places that you can get uh, new audience members. So an audience member can be someone who listens to your show. Preferably it will be someone who will want to support your show in some way, whether that is supporting you on Patreon or Ko Kofi, Kofi, whatever, uh, sending you a PayPal donation, um, talking about your show, uh, taking pictures of merchandise for your show. Um, that's a really fantastic way. Let's see. I feel like I have, whenever I see uh, my merch somewhere, um, that's free advertising and advertising usually costs money. Anyway, that's a whole nother talk. Um, so what I'm gonna do is for each of these seven circles around the main circle, I'm gonna write different places where my audience can be found. <laughs> Tamara says I should be drinking wine. You know, <laughs> cheers to you. I'm afraid that if I had wine right now, like mixing that with the Dayquil, I, 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 don't, I don't know what that would do to my system. Okay, so let's see, different places that uh, we can find listeners and audience members. Um, I'm translating this over from the original version of this business plan, which was clients. Um, but if you want to, you can think about each one of your listeners as a client. And then you can tell business owners that like, yeah, I have 200 clients. Hey, because I'm awesome. You should be telling people that you're awesome anyway. <laughs> yes, Damien, my mug. <laughs> my mug says not blood because I need everybody to know that I'm not drinking blood. Okay. I'm not drinking blood. This is coffee. Yep, not blood. So yeah, okay, so the places where I get listeners from are, we'll say conferences. Uh, let's see, and I'm looking at where I've gotten listeners from in the past. Uh, I'm cheating and using my old business plans here and I just dropped it, so that's awesome. Okay, let's see. I have um, my existing podcast listeners. They count. And so one of my bubbles is going to be WN Podcast for right now. And then I'm going to have GIS Podcast for Girl in Space. Um, I have my social media followers. And you can do this however you want. If you want separate bubbles for your different social media platforms? Yeah, platforms is the right word. Uh, if you want different bubbles for your different social media platforms, um, go for it. Uh, for me, I think there's probably some overlap. Um, and then what you want to keep in mind for both of these is that they will change and grow throughout the year. So these are just projections right now. Okay, cool. Okay, so I've got my pod listeners. Girl in Space pod listeners. I have a mailing list that I've built. Um, I remember when I first started this group, I asked a general question as a poll of whether or not you have an email list for your podcast. And I think that's going to be its own live stream. We'll talk about how to start an email list and what the benefits of having an email list are. Um, but it's a really good marketing tool. So I'm gonna make sure I don't uh, neglect my mailing list folks. 
social media. I think I'm just going to lump every social media person together just for the ease of this plan that I'm doing for you on the fly here. So we'll just put SM. And uh, let's see, guest podcasting. Uh, those of you who podcast and have never been on someone else's podcast, guest podcasting, so appearing as an expert on someone else's show, uh, can really help boost your listener numbers. So we'll put, I'll put guesting. And then um, I'll put promo swap because that's another great place to get listeners. So this will just help you get a feel for like what your overall potential audience looks like. Cool. So, okay, we're going to start with conferences. So every time I go to a conference, and again, this is just going to be me projecting. So this is me just understanding how many people I talk to at a conference, how many business cards I give out, how many of those people I think actually listen to my show. Um, so I, I did uh, New York Comic Con this year, which is really cool. Thank you, Travis and Caitlin. Um, I was able to do Rose City Comic Con this year. Um, I did PodFest and the Austin Film Festival and what have you. So we'll say I got maybe 300 new listeners uh, through conferences this year. Um, my Right Now podcast has about 4,500 listeners. Well, or it did the last time I checked. My audience tends to like, uh, if I don't put out new episodes, and it's been a while. I think August was the last time I put out an episode right now. Oh, I'm worst. Okay, not judging myself. We're not judging ourselves today. I'm not judging myself. You shouldn't either right now. We have a lot going on. Uh, Girl in Space listeners, I've probably got about... Uh, we'll be, I'll just be like... I'll be a little conservative, so I'll say about probably about 30,000 listeners. Um, mailing list, I've got about 6,000 people on a mailing list. Social media, I've got, we'll say, I'll be conservative there too. And just say with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I've probably got about 10K for Girl in Space and about 4K for right now. Uh, guesting. These are a little bit harder. So when, when I appear on another show, um, like when uh, Is This Adulting is kind enough to host me or um, any of the other shows I've been on, um, how many new listeners do I get from that? Um, I'll say 10 for, for an episode, depending. And it, that depends on what the other podcast audience looks like. And so um, if you appear on the show, you can ask them like, hey, how many people will this episode reach? Um, and get a feel for that. And then I usually say like 1% of those people will listen to your show. And that's just very conservative. You may look at your numbers later and see like a big spike and you can say, oh, I got, you know, 500 new subscribers or 500 new listeners because I appeared on this show. So um, do what you can with the numbers that you can project. And then when you know actual numbers, go through and plug those actual numbers in, which is why I do this in pencil. Yeah. So we'll say I get... 10 new listeners in the year for guesting. If I do a promo swap, that might get me 500 new listeners. So, okay, I'm gonna share this with you. So we'll say throughout the year, uh, I'll get 300 listeners from conferences. I already have uh, about four and a half thousand listeners for right now, 30K for Girl in Space. Um, I could get 500 new from promo swaps, 10 new from guesting. Again, these are all just like estimates that I'm putting in here. Social media, these are my followers. Again, there's going to be some overlap between the followers and the listeners. Um, so again, it's good to be conservative with these numbers. Uh, and then uh, the folks on my mailing list. Again, there will probably be some crossover uh, in, these, in these areas here. So this is a very rough estimate. I'm going to take out my calculator again because no way am I doing this in my head. Plus 10 plus plus. Okay, so that gives me about 
an audience of about 51,000 people. Um, so really, <laughs> Jimmy says, make a business plan, get listeners, do not drink blood, keep a quarter handy for drawing circles, seriously, don't drink blood. <laughs> yes, you have done well this evening. Those are the takeaways that I want you to remember from the business plan. Yes, you've done well. Megan says, I don't really have a list yet. That's okay. Um, I think when I, f so I first started list building in 2013 or 20, probably 20, 2014. We'll say 2014. So I've been growing mine for about five or six years now. When I, I want to say like when I first started out, I invited all my family and friends and I added their email addresses. Um, so if you're being uh, like, I don't know, if you're being conservative and you want to say like, oh, my target growth uh, for this year will be, you know, I want to get 30 people on my email list or 200 people on my email list. You can make that a good target uh, to shoot for. So, okay. So we do this. You can see now my sheet is filled out. We do this so we get a good idea of a couple things. Ugh, we do this so that we put our coffee in the right place. Okay, so we do this in order to know, A, where is the money coming from for our podcast? Where is the money coming from? What can we rely on? What can we project? And what needs to grow? What do we want to grow throughout the year in 2020? B where is our audience coming from? So right now I've got conferences, uh, my podcast listeners, so just people who find me uh, through Apple Podcasts or Spotify who just stumble across my show. Uh, we've got social media followers. We've got our email list. We've got guesting. We have promo swaps. There's a lot more places that guests can, or that guests, that listeners can come from. So please do feel free to make more than seven circles. I just did this because it looked pretty on the sheet. Um, you can have as many circles over there as you want for sources for your listeners. So, okay, you're looking at where's the money coming from? Where is the people? Where is the people coming from? Oh no, I wonder if my day cool is wearing off. Or my coffee, which is definitely not blood. Okay. Knowing these things will give you a good baseline for where you are right now and for where you want to be in the months and years ahead. So understanding this is where I am right now. This is what I'm projecting will stay the same in 2020. Now you can adjust this throughout the year. Again, that's why I did it in pencil. You can make, this is like version one. You can make version two. You can update it every quarter. You can update it in June and say, well, actually uh, I'm making $700,000 a month on Patreon because I blew up and that's awesome. And you can, so you can like update these as they change. You can update these if you realize, oh, hey, I went to a conference and I can tell that every time I go to a conference, um, I grow my listener base by 20%. Like, that's amazing. Um, but doing this will give you a good idea of where the money is coming from and where the people are coming from. And that will give you what you need to continue growing, to spot opportunities for growth, to understand maybe what you would like to uh, to grow or where you want to shift. Like, oh, I'd rather be making my money from Patreon than doing speaking gigs because I'm terrified of speaking in front of people. Like, okay. Um, so make it work for you. Um, this is, again, sort of the business plan for people who, like me, are not business-minded. Um, business plans come in a lot of shapes and forms. A lot of business plans will have um, the business's mission statements on it just so that you know that growing your money, growing your revenue, and growing your audience, are you're doing it for a reason, um, and you're doing it for a good cause, and you're just happening to benefit monetarily from it, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, 
Um, you can feel free to put your podcast mission statement up at the top. I do recommend that every podcast have, I know mission statements sound a little cheesy, but I want you to have like a mission or a purpose or a vision statement of some kind about what you want to do with your podcast and how you want your podcast to change the world and what you can do to affect that change with this amount of money for these amount of people. Okay, it is after 8 p.m., which means that since I am elderly and infirm, I need to be in bed. Uh, I might have to take some NyQuil to interact and, or counteract against the DayQuil that I took. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I, I hope that this um, maybe demystified uh, some of the business aspects of talking about your podcast. Um, I hope that those of you out there who actually know how to make real business plans uh, are not going to murder me uh, because this is not in a spreadsheet and it is in happy little bubbles. Um, <laughs> but do what works. You got to do what works for you. And this uh, this works for me. So um, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you start thinking about your podcast as a business and that you are comfortable with your podcast making money. You're comfortable growing your audience. I really want to see 2020 uh, to, to be a year of uh, a year of growth for you, uh, financially and otherwise. So, okay, again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments or uh, start a new thread over in the Seriously Successful Podcasters uh, Facebook group. Uh, with that, I'm Sarah, and I'm going to go fall down and take some more medicine. All right, have a great evening, and good luck with your business plans.